The values considered in this module on the design of a PV facility are estimated values and should only be used as an approach. In reality, the values will vary at each location. A detailed performance ratio study is fundamental to evaluate the profitability of any solar facility. Any evaluation of potential system losses needs to take account of the location, temperature variations and the performance of the inverter and cables, the panel's tolerances, the effects of pollution, light dispersion or reflectance on performance, any shadowing and other potential losses, particularly the loss of efficiency if fixed panels are chosen over sun tracking systems. And here are some key issues in optimising the performance ratio of a PV installation temperature and, and elevation, inverter efficiency, cable sizing, the solar panels tolerances, a cleaning schedule for the modules, avoidance of shadowing while optimising surface area and a maintenance schedule. Shadowing and surface optimization can have considerable effect on the plant's profitability. The main aspects to consider are the azimuthal deviation from the south if the plant is in the northern hemisphere or from the north if the plant is in the southern hemisphere, the tilt of the solar angles uh, panels, shadows from external features and shadows from features within the solar plant itself. A basic rule on optimal distancing between rows is avoid shadows during the four central hours of the day, particularly during the times of the year when solar radiation is lowest. That means calculating the height of the sun above the horizon to plus or minus two hours at solar midday. The angle will de vary depending on the plant's latitude. The objective is to avoid a situation where the tops of the front solar panels project a shadow onto the lowest parts of the panels placed behind. The optimum tilt angle of a solar panel can be expressed in a simple formula. Tilt is equal to latitude minus 10 degrees. In Spain, tilt angles from 30 to 33 degrees are considered the optimum, but tilt angles anywhere between 20 and 40 degrees will not result in considerable system losses. Tilt angles below 15 degrees in urban areas may cause system losses because of pollution and dirt accumulation on the panels. And where the panel is installed on a southern facing slope, the slope can be used to reduce the distance needed between panel rows. In the northern hemisphere, the most favourable orientation is zero degrees south. However, an orientation deviation of less than 20 degrees east or west will cause negligible system losses. The graph on this slide which is valid at a latitude of 40 degrees, shows the loss effects of various combinations of orientation and tilt angle. Over the next slides, we will refer to a solar plant built at Valde Carabanos, south of Madrid in Spain. Prior to setting uh, uh, settling on a location, a series of investigations had to be made into the environmental and urban conditions, including air pollution levels. The topography has to be studied, taking account of shadowing issues and the area that will be needed for panel rows, whether fixed or sun tracking systems are used. Here are the results of the shadowing study for the panel rows at Valde Carabanos it would result in an average shadowing of 2.78%. With rooftop facilities, a choice has to be made between following the shape of the roof or tilting and orienting the panels to optimise their performance. The option that delivers greatest investment return should be chosen. The variables to be taken into account are the impact of the angles of orientation and tilt, any shadowing, a comparison between the expected energy output from the two options, and the roof's geometrical limits. Care has to be taken when calculating the performance of panels that are on the same row, 
where variations in the roof levels will mean that the panels are actually on different planes. One advantage of adapting the solar panels to the roof shape is a reduction in the visual impact. It may be possible to use the solar panels for additional functions beyond energy generation. For example, they can act as sunshades or they can act as features in the aesthetic design of the building. If the solar panel can play some additional function in the building, that changes the cost-benefit calculation. We will consider that the radiation in the south of Spain, near Madrid, for a certain year can be around 4.77 kilowatt hours per meter squared on average. Here's a formula to calculate the expected annual production of a solar panel. This is a grid connected facility. The performance ratio of an off grid facility would be considerably lower than the 74% used here as we'll discuss in later modules. Once the modules and inverters are selected, the configuration of the system should allow maximization of produced energy. In some cases, a range of modules and inverters should be considered in order to find the combination that offers best system performance. The configuration of the system should take account of the maximum input voltage of the inverter as well as the maximum input current of the inverter and the voltage and current at maximum power point. When designing the solar panel, con con panel configuration in series and parallels, take account of the fact that the voltage and current of the branch will change as the temperature changes. Therefore, it will be necessary to choose the most extreme values possible in the region when making the calculation. Here's a screenshot from PVSYS, a solar panel design software. It shows the variables that partic that particular software package takes into account. In calculating electrical issues, it's very important to take account of the maximum current in the cables and the maximum allowed voltage drop. If the cables cover a long distance, the main factor to determine the cable section will be the voltage drop. But if the cable covers a very short distance, the current that flows along the cable will determine the section of the cable. For simplified earthing calculations, start with the formulas on this slide. Key issues are soil resistivity and the electrodes characteristics. The cable sizing should be based on the following formulas. To protect an installation against overvoltage, Electrical dischargers should be connected at the input and output of each device needing protection. The inverter and control cables will meet a medium level of protection while the meter will need high protection. The dangers here include lightning strikes that can produce short periods of transitory overvoltage with huge amplitudes. Network imbalances can result in a permanent overvoltage with longer duration and lower amplitude. In installations where more than one medium voltage transformer is required, it's important to define the correct topology for the connections across all medium voltage transformers and the power line on the main grid. This slide shows you some of the characteristics of a ring versus a star for topology. And here's a typical layout showing the electrical protections at a PV facility.